Scotland has long been known for prophecy and the gift of the second sight. In the 13th century there was Thomas of Erkeldoun. He made several predictions that found their way into the earliest historical chronicles of Scotland. In more recent times there was Swain MacDonald of the Kyle of Sutherland. Swain died in 2003 and made several predictions of local and national events that came to pass. Many people came to see him to learn about their futures. And here at Shannonry Point in the Black Isle in the 17th century, a man known as Conyachor, the Brand Seer, was executed, burned alive in a barrel of tar for making a dangerous prediction. We're going to go on a wee tour and learn something of the life and predictions of the Brand Seer and how he ended up here at Shannonry Point in the Black Isle, burned alive in a barrel of tar. So what do we know of the origins of Conyachor? Well, there's nothing actually recorded officially about him, so we have to rely here on the oral tradition. It's said that his family was from the parish of Uig on the Isle of Lewis and if you know anything of Uig and Lewis, you'll know that there's a very strong Viking influence there from the discovery of the Lewis chessmen. And it was said that one night his mother was walking through Uig and she encountered the ghost of a Danish princess. And as the ghost had encountered a mortal, it was then obliged to confer a gift upon the mortal before it was allowed to go back into the grave. And Cognac's mother asked if his son could have the gift of the second sight. As a young man, Cognac came to Ross Shire to Bran Castle, just across the hill from here where he worked as a farm labourer. And Bran Castle was a property of the Mackenzie Seaforths and his, his custodian there was Lady Seaforth Mackenzie. So this is where Cognac or the Bran Seer would come to settle at Bran and just across the hill behind me at Loch Uzi. How Cognac came to discover he had the gift of the second sight. Just behind me you'll see a hill, a very, it's a very curious hill. It's called Knock Farrell and if you're ever up there it's got a very strange atmosphere. And while Cognac was working at Bran Castle, he was on Knock Farrell one day and he decided to go for a sleep on what he called a fairy mound, which would probably have been a stone circle. And while he was sleeping, he had a very strange dream. And he woke up and he discovered a stone in his waistcoat pocket. He took the stone out of his pocket and discovered that it had a hole at the centre and decided from there on that this was his fairy stone or his divinity stone. He looked through the hole in the stone and saw a disturbing vision. Now, Cognac suspected that Lady Seaforth despised him. And as he looked through the hole in the stone, he saw Lady Seaforth lacing his dinner with poison. So he went home that evening to Bran Castle and Lady Seaforth set out his dinner. And instead of eating it, Cognac gave his dinner to his dog then watched in horror as the dog writhed on the floor and then died. And Cognacor from then on was the brand seer. He knew that he could see into the future and that this was his power, his divinity stone. And he discovered it up on the top of Knock Farrell. Cognac made many telling predictions through his divinity stone. He said that one day black bridleless horses belching fire and steam would pass through the highlands. And he said that the day will come when long strings of carriages without horses shall run between Dingwall and Inverness and more wonderful still between Dingwall and the Isle of Skye. All these came to pass with the advent of the Highland Railway and the opening of the West Coast Line to the Kyle of Lochalsh. He said that the day would come when Scotland would regain its parliament 
when men could walk dry shod from England to France, with the modern Scottish Parliament reopening in Edinburgh in the 1990s, shortly after the completion of the Channel Tunnel. He said that the day will come when black rain will fall on Aberdeen, bringing many riches, thought to mean the discovery of North Sea oil and the economic boom from the 1970s on. These are just a few of the predictions of the brand seer. I'm just outside Strathpeffer, the village of Strathpeffer, and this here behind me is a carved Pictish stone known locally as the Eagle Stone, and it dates from before the 7th century. And when you look in closely, the carvings reveal the shape of a horseshoe and a winged shape thought to be an eagle. And the brand seer made a prediction about the Eagle Stone. He said that if the Eagle Stone was to fall for a third time, then this valley would become flooded to such an extent that ships would be able to drop their hawsers and anchor on the Eagle Stone. Now, it's already known to have fallen twice, and to give you some idea as to whether the Brand Seer's predictions are taken seriously in more recent times, if we look in closely at the base of the stone, we can see that it's actually been set in concrete. So nobody's taking any chances. And Cognacor, the brand seer, made another strange prediction about Strathpeffer. He said that when Strathpeffer has five spires and the fifth spire is completed, then a ship would drop its anchor on the fifth spire. And just after the First World War, Strathpeffer got its fifth church and the spire was built and the Highland Games were taking place here and there was a small airship on display and the airship drifted off and they dropped a rope with a grappling iron which caught up on the fifth spire of Strathpeffer. So these are just a few more curious predictions of Konya Khor. Behind me is the hill of Tom the Hurich on the outskirts of Inverness. In the 17th century, Cognac predicted that the day will pass when full-rigged ships shall sail eastwards and westwards at the back of Tom the Hurich. This would seem like the unlikeliest prophecy as the nearest ocean is a mile and a half that way in the Bewley Firth. But in 1822, the Caledonian Canal, linking the east and west coasts of Scotland, designed by Thomas Telford, was finally opened, and full-rigged ships did indeed sail eastwards and westwards at the back of Tom the Hurich. Cognac also predicted that the day will pass when the fairy hill of Tom the Hurich shall be under lock and key and the fairies held captive within. Tom the Hurich eventually became designated as a cemetery and was given an iron perimeter fence and a gate which is locked in the evening, and Cognac's second prophecy about Tom the Hurich came to be fulfilled. When the River Ness can be crossed dry shod in five places, a frightful disaster will strike the world. In August 1939, a fifth bridge, a temporary bridge, was put in place over the River Ness in Inverness. Days later, on September 1st, 1939, Hitler invaded Poland and the Second World War broke out. The day will come to pass when fire and water run in streams under the streets of Inverness. Could this have been the advent of running water and gas in underground pipes? There was also a prediction of fire, flood and chaos when the Ninth Bridge was completed. This happened in the 1980s and some have taken this to mean the Piper Alpha disaster in the North Sea. And what of the Battle of Culloden? On passing this spot one day, also known as Dramossi Moor, the Brand Seer spoke these words. O oh, Dramossi, thy bleak moor shall, ere many generations have passed away, be stained with the best blood of the Highlands. 
glad I am that I will not see that day, for it will be a fearful period. Heads will be lopped off by the score, and no mercy will be shown or quarter given on either side. Cognac spent his days working at Brand Castle and living here at Loch Uzi. So what was the great transgression that led to him being executed and burned alive in the fateful barrel of tar at Shannonry Point? One evening at Brand Castle, Lady Seaforth ordered Cognac to look into his stone and report on her husband's dealings in Paris. He was reluctant to do so, but he did. He looked through the stone and what did he see but her husband having several affairs in Paris? He revealed this to her and she denounced him as a liar and a witch. And he then told her that the Seaforth line would die out ere a couple of generations had passed with a deaf, dumb and blind child. And this did indeed come to pass. But before he was captured, Cognac fled and he left us with one enduring prophecy. He ran back here to Loch Uzi and he took the divinity stone and he threw it out into the loch. And he said that one day someone would come here fishing. They would cast into the loch and catch a great pike with a hollow stone in its belly and discover that they now had the gift of prophecy and would be the next brand seer. Who would believe such a thing? <laughs> <laughs>